Hey guys, this is Eric. Um, I decided to do a semi-short tutorial for my uh, blog this week. Um, and the tutorial I'm going to be doing is how to install and use uh, Microsoft's Ajax plugin for ASP.NET using Visual Studio 2010 Ultimate Edition. Um, when I started my project, I pretty much didn't know anything about using Ajax or installing it, and I spent many, many, many hours looking up how to do that, and after tens, possibly even 80 hours, um, I feel confident enough that I could make a pretty good tutorial of this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go down to our extension, extension manager under Tools. And we're going to download Nougat Package Manager. You might have to go and search for it on the online gallery uh, to do that. I think I believe you actually do. Uh, just type in Nougat, and it should pop up pretty quickly. It's the first result. Uh, download that, and I believe you have to restart um, Visual Studio. But uh, once you've restarted, go ahead and make a new website, and we will call this. Uh, Web tutorial. All right, well, let's start that up. So as we see here, start out with a pretty plain and simple website. You know, the usual ASP first website. Go ahead and delete the content of that. Uh, not really going to worry about any more styling. Um, but up in my extensions, Ajax extensions, we have to actually load these. It's not going to come pre-installed with Visual Studio. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to website up here in the toolbar and go to manage NuGet packets. And uh, NuGet is really great for downloading um, Ajax, jQuery, uh, any of these other frameworks that are really nice. So we're going to go ahead and go to, uh, let's see here. Ajax not on the front page. So we're just going to search for Ajax. Um, so go ahead and install that. And I don't have the scripts on this website or the, the bin file. So I'm going to have to go ahead and install that as well. And as we see here, it's populated on the right side. Thank you for warning me about something, computer. All right. And going to go ahead and clean this up a little bit because I don't like seeing this and I'm really really like that. Okay, so uh, we're going ahead and we're actually going to have to populate, you actually have to populate this, um, I guess because I've done it before it automatically populates it in my Ajax extensions but uh, go ahead and make a new tab here, you can call it like Ajax uh, full or whatever you want to call it doesn't matter and then uh, right click inside of it and we're going to add or excuse me um, choose items now when you first do this um, all the Ajax stuff isn't going to pop up so you actually have to go and browse for it um, if you go to my documents or wherever your Visual Studio folder is you can go to websites, uh, go to our dynamic web tutorial website, and we're going to go to bin, down to Ajax Control Toolkit, double click on that, alright, populates up here, click OK, and it's going to populate this with all of our sweet little Ajax controls, I oh, just moved them, okay, so, uh, Let's just make a label. And ID equals uh, I like to use naming conventions. Makes it really easy when you're coding with the IntelliSense. IntelliSense is amazing in my opinion. Don't care what the haters say. Let's see. And 
I'm just going to leave the text empty. And I'm going to add a button. SP uh, equals server. And if you ever lose your IntelliSense, you space backspace once, um, you can press control space bar and it comes back up. It's really great for when you're, you know, going through code and you mess up, like right here, go ID. Well, I won't need a telesis for this. Uh, BTN, hello world, and add an extra W. And add some text to this. Okay, so have our label, hello world. Okay, so let's add a click handler to this. So we're gonna say LBL, there's hello world, cool. Dot text, dot no, template control, no, don't do that. Dot text, yeah, I have to get to the T. And we're gonna give a string, hello world. God, why is I, uh, I don't know why I'm doing this tonight. It's 3.30, that's probably why. Okay, so um, we're going to go ahead and go back. We're going to run it. Yes, allow debugging. It's going to pull up in Firefox because my Chrome browser has too many tabs to open right now. It'll make my computer extremely slow. So we're going to go add that, hello world, that's really nifty. Um, one of the problems though with uh, the standard ASP is that every time you click a button, it does a full post back. And what that means is it um, goes through the page life cycle of the ASP.NET page. And if you guys know about that, it unloads everything and saves a couple things and then loads it up again. Looks ugly when you have um, a very large page um, and you're trying to make it look nice. You don't want, you know, to have this, you know, reloading every time, especially if someone's got, you know, internet problems or they have a slow connection and maybe they're on dial up. It, it just makes your website look cheap. Um, so let's go ahead and make this dynamic using some cool Ajax. So I'm going to go ahead and stop debugging. And the first thing I'm going to do when adding Ajax is I'm going to go down here to the uh, Ajax extensions and I'm going to go ahead and add a script manager up here. Um, and uh, what I'm going to do next is add a See, I'm going to add an update panel. This isn't in alphabetical order, so that's why I can't find it down here. Um, where is it? Can't find my update panel. Oh my gosh, where is it? It's up here. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, so it's part of your standard Ajax extensions. That's good to know. All right, so we're going to add our update panel and we're going to surround our uh, original ASP code. If I go ahead and save, it gives me an error. That's because when adding to an update panel, any ASP or HTML content you have to put within a uh, content template. Um, so let's go ahead and tab this over, make it look nice. Okay, so in the script manager, we're going to go and add um, enable partial rendering. I'm going to set that to true. All right. So now that we're going to go ahead and go in here. All right, load up the ASP page, add, boom, hello world. Doesn't do any of that crappy, you know, page, full page reload. 
Um, if they lose internet connection, it doesn't really matter too much. They, you know, they'll just keep clicking on it. Um, and yeah, it looks just, it just looks really nice. Um, and you can add all kinds of content. Uh, you can add any kind of t content, dynamic content, um, to the, to these partial page updates. Uh, one thing though is adding dynamic buttons with, um, event handlers, uh, I haven't been able to figure out. Um, it's really tough to do. Uh, so if any if you guys have um, done this before using an update panel, um, please tell me how you did it because I cannot figure it out. Um, so uh, that's it. That's how to make you. That's how you can make your website uh, pretty dynamic looking. Just get creative. Um, put some forms in there. Maybe I know in our uh, website. We put a uh, some cascading drop-down menus um, or drop-down lists that we made just using um, ASP. We didn't even use the cascading drop-down menus in the Ajax, uh, which I probably will be moving to uh, the next iteration of our website. But uh, that's it. Hope you can make your websites look a little bit more dynamic and cool. So have a good night.